Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Shadows of New York. We just absolutely beat Kaiser on the ground like a cheap toy drum. Yep. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> He's unwell, talking nonsense. I approach him again. You wanted to have me whacked. What, do you think I'm stupid? Him? <laughs> uh, you needed to be taught a lesson. Well, would you look at who ended up teaching who? Now talk. Tell me everything you know about Callahan's final death. All of it. Go to hell. You can fuck me up however bad you want, but I'm still not going to tell you shit. You try anything, there will be consequences. There will be retribution. I'm taking you to church, bitch. My mouth is shut. He might be my last chance to solve the case, but if I don't force him to talk, he won't. There's a burgeoning thought in my mind, but it scares even me. Do I dare push him to the edge? Make him suffer until he squeaks? Ah, shit, this is a, uh, thing. This is do an I, important one, yeah. Ah, do I do whatever is necessary, or do I have limits? Means potential kill. Potentially kill him. I don't the think information. that, I don't think that will be received very well. And that might also Probably bode, not. that might also bode well, uh, worse down the line. I feel like we shouldn't kill him. Up to you, man. All right. Uh, trophy, know thyself. No more human, still humane. All right, so I won't, like, fucking brutalize him or anything. <clears throat> All of you might be fucking monsters, but that doesn't mean I am. Big words for someone who just beat up her fucking elder. Two for flinching. <laughs> I will still get back at you. I will appeal to whoever I can. Yeah, sweetheart, whatever. See, that's the good thing about being the lone voice of dissent. It's a mutually beneficial deal. One side gets the unearned moral superiority. The other side gets no resistance whatsoever. Oh, I will resist, by whatever means necessary. Spare me. Tomorrow night you will see the compromise that everybody agreed upon, agreed on long ago. Progress is coming like a train. If you want to throw yourself on the tracks, be my guest. I'd love to watch. Tomorrow night? Why tomorrow? Julia. I look back over my shoulder and see Kadir. Kadir! Bloody hell, what is wrong with you? Why does he look like that? This is why I didn't want you to get involved. I had a hunch. A hunch that the moment you got a whiff of true power, all breaks would be off. Hey, fuck off, man! I restrained myself! Look, you're talking nonsense. You're out of your damned mind. I should have you in for a potential masquerade breach. <laughs> Just look around at the fucking empty COVID streets. What, motherfucker, what breach? Just let me explain myself. This ugly fucker tried to have me beaten, maybe even killed. Don't you care about that? I have no idea, Sheriff. No idea. She's dangerous, psychotic. Take his phone. I will take care of you in a moment. You get to my car, Kaiser. Hold on. I'm not done questioning him yet. It looks like there's a major conspiracy to... I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. And you're gonna be glad. I leave it at that. If you do that, I'm gonna assume you're... I'm gonna have to assume you're complicit. Not with two strikes in my book. You don't want to risk a third. So that's that? Tell me, what was all my footwork even for? We'll be seeing each other, little lady. Can you hear this? Go home, Julia. But... Go home. Fine. I will. But before I do, I take a quick peek into Kaiser's limo. Still abandoned a little further down the street. <clears throat> I skip the church visit again tonight. I want more time to finish this report. Who knows, it might be my final one. I, I think we're actually near the end. Yeah. I want to spend more time with Dakota. Yeah, just forget about the rest of the world. A lot happened tonight, but I can still manage to be at our apartment an hour earlier than usual. She should be glad. She's not there. I sneak into the apartment as silently as possible, trying to surprise her. When I reach the bedroom, I see something unexpected. It hits me like a ton of bricks. At the beginning, I can't properly parse the sight. But when I finally understand what I'm looking at, it causes a wave of terror and disgust to well up in my si well, well, swell up in my chest. What the fuck? 
She shocked, ah, she's shocked to see me, doesn't know what to do. She's like a deer in the headlights, or a squirrel girl, poorly trying to hide her misdeeds from a teacher. You're not, you're early. Yes, I am. Those are my clothes, Dakota. These are my cigarettes. That's my jewelry on the table. Yeah, I was, uh... And I'm pretty sure, God almighty, I thought I was just being neurotic whenever I noticed something dreadfully familiar in you. I never... I can explain. Please do explain. A good ten seconds of awkward silence passes. Pass. I can see her spreading, spending an eternity in her head. This isn't what it looks like. Oh my god, it's exactly what it looks like. I'll just come out and say it. Dakota, are you single white femaling me? Uh... <laughs> may, uh hmm. It all makes sense now. No. Come on, no! I thought I was the leech in this relationship. We watched that movie together. We made fun of Jennifer, Anderson, Jennifer Jason Leigh together. A roommate stalking and imitating her roommate? Ha ha ha! What a fun- what a concept, right? But I was being fed on in a more fair, eh, more sinister way without knowing it. Don't, uh, don't be silly. Silly? I've never been this serious with you. So whenever she put on my makeup, whenever I used her as a mirror, she was always hyping me up because she wanted to live vicariously through me? So many things, so many little things make sense in retrospect. The little ways you kept modulating your speech after me. The weird ways your tastes were always compatible. Some of your art feeling so familiar. None of it would trigger any alarms by itself, and yet... She's as humanely embarrassed as possible. Julia, listen! Don't, don't fucking touch me! I can barely think of anything more repulsive than being put on a pedestal like this. It's like the other person is begging me to perceive them as someone worse, if not outright subhuman. Don't be like this. Just don't. You know, this would probably be infinitely more palatable if you talk to me like a person here, and not like, I don't know, your fucking mommy? You know what? Fuck you. I've been locked in this apartment by myself because of all the pandemic shit going on. It's fucking me up. I know you have it hard right now, so I don't want to bother you. Yeah, I was counting on you to ask about how I'm feeling, babe. How is your work-life balance? Aren't you feeling claustrophobic? Hey, is it just me or is our drug supply weirdly shrinking too fast? But no, you're too much of a self-centered bitch. You regularly suck me dry and it's okay. But the moment I entertain the thought of taking something in return, I'm crossing a line. Oh no, I'm a member of an immortal elite secret society. It's so hard to cope, Dakota. Whenever I gracefully decide to visit our apartment, <clears throat> let's just do what I enjoy until the pain stops. Fuck you. Fuck you. Sincerely, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Yeah, There's nothing you can do but like take. And you should have <laughs> learned by now that just taking will make you happy, you big dumb bitch. Yeah, you two. <laughs> you two's gonna have problems. <laughs> Stop! Just, just. I don't know what to say. I feel disgusted, both with her and myself. Just stop! Dakota breaks down crying. She grabs a jacket and a purse, then runs out of the apartment. I don't try to stop her. I stand there for a short while in silence, and then lock the door. Did she take her keys? I don't know. I don't know if I care. I desired for someone else, not for myself. For a way to open a different world, not get locked back in mine. I collapse onto the soft bed. I smell her perfume. I always liked it, but now it makes me slightly nauseous. I try not to think of Dakota. I think of Kaiser. I think of Kadir. I think of Callahan. No matter what I think of, I sense doom. I feel that I've just sealed my fate, whatever it may be. <clears throat> Everything fucking sucks. Trophy! Scream bloody murder! I think that was for when I beat up Kaiser, but I'm not sure why that popped now. Back into the void! Back into the void! Back into the void. I choose to rest! For me, it always starts with an image. <clears throat> oh, good, Back we're here. here again. An image which might be vaguely eerie or interesting, but usually not an image that would pr provoke particularly strong feelings by itself. Usually it hides a mystery. That much is correct. What you munching on? Nothing. Oh. What is Water that? bottle. Oh. But that mystery doesn't exist without a text. Or more specifically, a context. 
Context is everything. One way or another, you need to process what you're looking at. Maybe that context will be something you've heard, or overheard. Maybe, although it's quite rare and pretty special, it will be your very own creative, captivating, complete interpretation. A ghost of an idea. Is this a half-forgotten memory of something unspeakably beautiful I will never, ever see again? It's the sun! Just a scene from a movie? A fragment of a music video? An imitation? Animation. Or maybe this really is the last thing Callahan ever saw in his own life. Warm sunbeams caressing his skin and turning it to ash. A giant ball of fire engulfing his body in flame from 93 million miles away. Was he terrified? Was he grateful? There's no will, no suicide note, no nothing. Instead, we can only count on what the local historians will write, presumably letting their biases shape the narrative one way or another. What am I looking at here? A horrible, laughable hall of mirrors? A creep whom I never, ever want to see again? A vampire much more despicable than myself? Or maybe someone who loved taking care of me and deserved to be cared for in return? <clears throat> Funny thing, whenever I was high as a kite, mentally lost in dimensions parallel to ours, she was my anchor. Our shared history, my feelings for her were an anchor. Matthew McConaughey returning to his estranged daughter from the other side of the cosmos, from beyond the event horizon, guided by nothing but love. Then, whenever I got back to planet Earth for a week or two, I was haunted by a memory of that affection. I was the best possible version of myself towards her. But that haunting always refused to transfigure into something real. What gradually took its place were angry, disappointed thoughts, and among them, one thought that I was always trying to suppress. I need someone who'd know how to raise me up, spiritually, but all I have is a sycophant who always working her ass off to lift me up without understanding what I need. It's hurting us both. Having these words pop up, pop up in my head hurt me, because they had a ring of truth in them, but also because I knew there just there might just be another narrative, a better narrative. I was just too stupid to find it. <sighs> story of my life, story of my own life. I still have no idea what I think about this city. I had my the best city in the world phase. I had a just a playground for wealthy fucktards phase. Now I'm in search of a better description. One day, probably, I will stumble upon, like a piece of writing or a prestigious TV show scene that will contain just that, and suddenly, I'll look at this place with new eyes. Or maybe I won't. It's like the frustrations I had back at Lodestar. All these words constantly trailing behind reality, trapping you in useless mindsets instead of bringing enlightenment. Fuck all those flashy writers whose main concern is furthering their own brand. Douchebags who present you with limited, pathetic, depressing realities where they are kings. Fuck them all to hell. We need words that will paint a brighter future before our eyes. <clears throat> but what if that can't be done without reinterpreting the past first? What if we haven't even defined the ills and threats correctly? Once again, my thoughts return to the same visual that has been tormenting me for almost every waking moment this past week. A senseless demise devoid of any context. A crime scene stripped of evidence, an image created by an unknown artist, designed to leave you dumbfounded. The investigation is over. All the possible avenues explored, all the non-testimonies are in, no concrete evidence found. The play is almost complete, the actors ready to leave the stage. Yeah, I think it this is, is the end of the game. It is what it is. Yep. I failed as a detective, maybe through no fault of my own, but again, it is what it is. This case, this scene... This picture never needed an investigator. From what I understand, all the people in charge ever wanted was a talented... writer. What if... a ghost of an idea? When I wake up, Dakota's still not here. I don't know how to feel about that, so I just don't. Kadir hasn't left any messages by the door. Still that mad, huh? He'll probably appeal to the court to take me off the case, and if half the garbage Kaiser is spouting is correct, he shouldn't have trouble convincing everyone. <clears throat> I look at the mirror and stare at my warped non-reflection. This place is upsetting. You need a change of scenery, girl. The depressing streets of a locked-down New York City will do. I think of God. Maybe that's why I half-consciously picked the cathedral as my destination. I think of the silver cross adorning my chest. An empty signifier. Whenever someone asks me why I wear it, they hear a different story. You want to know how I got these scars, Batman? <coughs> Batman. 
I think of these silhouettes that I keep spawning from the corner of my eye. No. I don't even want to imagine what that means. I feel what it means, and it makes me nauseous enough. I think of my clan. So closely tied to the Catholic Church. That's a love with marriage, so to speak. Like, for example, the one between my parents. I think about the great irony of the Lysambra's truth with the Holy See. We're the only ones who stay so close to the Lord's light, even though we're certain we will never, ever reach it. Some of us shadows have visions. Visions of comrades who departed this world recently, traveling through some abstract space, one that's disturbing and astonishing in equal measures. They almost reach whatever afterlife there is for our kind, but then get caught and consumed by a dark, monstrous silhouette. The rumor is, <clears throat> our antediluvian wasn't stopped by his final death. He's still out there, behind the shadows, taking revenge for our patricide, feeding on us like a Saturn devouring his children. Wrong one. Huh. <clears throat> the forebears of every kindred belonging to the 13 vampire clans, vicious bastards of the third generation, created the world as we know, and some features of our blood said to have originated with them. Thanks for cutting me out of the internet, you Mesopotamian dickweed. Is what I'd say if I didn't have a pre eh, premonition we might see each other again. Someday. Somehow. Oof. As Dakota would say, it might not be factual, but it is an emotional truth. From joining the Camarilla to panically scrambling for any safe house, it's like our elders are solely motivated by fear. The sins of our fathers are catching up with them, and it's young kindred like me who are given responsibility to clean up their mess with the constant scent of doom losing, uh, looming over the horizon. We don't talk about salvation anymore. We're just minimizing the impact of damnation. That's no way to live, but then again, maybe that's why they call it unlife. <sighs> Shit, it's Benoit. Hello there, lost sheep. I'll have you know, this shepherd was extraordinarily patient in waiting for you. What are you doing here? Well, the night is so young. Alpha blood? Well, you're in luck. This place offers both the body and the blood. If missionaries learned their methods from pickup artists, they would be all be like this guy. I'm not Honestly, in the mood. Honestly, yeah. Uh... I'm not in the mood, you sorry-ass bum. Step the fuck away from me or you're gonna be sorry. Oh my, something troubling you? If so, I can arrange a confession. Or, if you're in a hurry, keep in mind, the path from inner turmoil begins oh, with the friendly the ear. Water. And I got one right here. Kurwa Jabena Twoha. You want me to fuck you up, don't you? Don't you? Julia, as you should know by now, I always interpret this kind of response to preaching as divine as the devil stirring inside. Is that what this is, Julia? The liar and the father of lies got a hold on your soul? If so, give me a signal, even the smallest one. I'll do my best to spot it. <sighs> Something swells up inside my chest. I recognize the feeling. The handbrake just broke, and I'm definitely not on level ground. Fuck, here we go! Listen, I've had enough, alright? Enough! Enough of your sanctimonious attitude, enough of your brazen lack of basic empathy, enough of your dumb, ugly fucking mug! You're a fucking singularity of stupidity, tastelessness, and cringe! I've met all sorts of horrible shitheads and asshats this week, and somehow none of them get under my skin the way you do, motherfucker! Like a goddamn Jehovah's Witness going from door to door, <coughs> except you're always knocking on my fucking skull, going, Hey, do you know God exists? Have you heard that God exists? Like, hold on, hold it right there. When did I ever say that God exists? What? I said, what makes you think I believe God exists? Oh, now you're just fucking with me. No, I'm serious. Well, he sounds serious, at least. <laughs> I'm actually speechless. I think there's been some sort of silly misunderstanding that desperately needs to be cleared up. I'm all ears. I sure hope so, Julia. I feel like you Got must him. have ignored half of what I've been saying to you for you to reach these conclusions. That's very well possible, actually. It usually takes 15 seconds of him talking for me to get completely zoned out. So, to avoid any further mix-ups, I will go back to the beginning and explain the core of my religious beliefs, okay? So, hmm... In the beginning, there was... <laughs> <laughs> Just starts quoting the entire Bible from front to back to you. I love the Catholic imagery. I cherish the tradition and lore. I adore the practices, the intricacies of the theology, the message contained in the Bible. Of course I do. Does that mean I believe that one day I will see the big dad in the sky? Forgive me, Lord, but I don't think so. 
Doesn't sound very likely, especially for a bloodthirsty creature of the night. Ah, all right. Well, as entertaining as this has been, we're all out of time. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you later. Adios.